There's a mule man who cares and a show you can share. Equine answers are here. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Took you by surprise a little bit there, Steve, eh? Yeah, hey, uh, that's uh, that's pretty unique there, Dave, yeah. I uh, I kind of came up with that five minutes ago, and I thought it might be a... Uh, might be fun to start off today's broadcast with it. Hey, Steve, uh, I uh, I got back from Prescott, okay, and uh, you did all right getting those lights hung up on the house, didn't you? Yeah, we got it all done. Yeah, that's getting good. That's real Christmas good. Yeah. Party. So, uh, folks, it's uh, it's a lot of fun to be back here. Uh, last week, kind of last minute, it it looked like. Uh, well, I'm just going to be honest with you. My wife wanted to get out of town a little bit early. She says, hey, we're going to go up to the cabin with my family. Can you get off early? I said, well, let me check with Steve and see if he would be okay recording a show ahead of time. And we'll record that show ahead of time and uh, and uh, post it online. And Steve said, yeah, that's fine. So we kind of did that all last minute. And I'm happy to report I was able to get home on time get out and up to Prescott uh, about 20 minutes past when we thought we would. So we got there about 7.20 instead of 7 o'clock. She was happy. I was happy. And it wound up being a wonderful Thanksgiving. How did uh, the last uh, thing, how did Thanksgiving go for you, Steve? It went just dandy. Yeah, we, we had a good Thanksgiving with the family there. Went over to see my nephew and uh, we had Thanksgiving. Actually, we had thanksgiving at my nephew's friend's house they they kind of go around and and do thanksgiving at different houses at different times so that's what we did oh how fun keeping things uh, interesting and fun every single year yeah it's uh it's always a good time it's always good when you can be around good people too and i'll tell you what if uh i know we've got friends watching right now who maybe uh celebrated Thanksgiving with fewer people than they had uh, before and just, uh, you know, you get older and life changes and things are different and maybe you celebrate a couple hours with the family instead of the whole day, but you know, it's all a blessing and it is all goodness and uh, it's all, it's all, uh, it's all grace. Well, we're going to get back into the swing of things talking about mules and donkeys and uh, that's what we do every single Wednesday. Well, just about every single Wednesday and uh, we're going to do it here today. So my my name is Dave and this is Steve Edwards. Um, Steve has spent uh, since 1981 learning about the mule and the donkey since 1991 sharing anything and everything he has learned with people including training techniques that just work real well for uh, for these animals especially over the horse. Um, uh, tack that is better suited for the structure and the design of the mule. And we believe that the mule and the donkey were intelligently designed uh, and saddles that uh, accommodate the way the mule and donkey bone structure uh, has been created and it disperses the weight in the proper places. Um, we talk about all that stuff. And if you got some questions about a horse, we're always willing to talk about that a little bit as well. The way it works, is this program is guided 100% by you. I have a few questions that come in throughout the week. And uh, if they're a good fit for the program, I save them and I put them on the program. And so I've got a couple here that we'll ask today. But by and large, the questions you ask live each and every week are the ones that steer the program. So what do we ask of you? Well, first and foremost, before anything else, that you share your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like today. So we would love to just know that you're here hanging out with us, spending a few minutes, where you're, your name, where you're watching from, and what the weather is like today. The second thing that we ask is any and every mule or donkey question, please put it into the comment section. We really, really treasure any opportunity to help you gain trust and get results with your animal, that the time you spend out uh, in the corral, uh, in the pen, uh, walking around the trail, that's valuable time. That's the one thing you cannot get back. You can figure out ways to make more money. You can figure out ways to build a bigger house. You can figure out ways to buy another car, whatever. But you can, Father, time is undefeated in the end. You can never get your time back. 
So we want to help you make the most of it when you're out there working with your animal. So ask any and every question you got. And then the third thing that we ask is that you share the broadcast. The way you do that, if you're watching on YouTube, is by clicking like on this video and then subscribing to the channel. That lets the almighty YouTube know that this is a good program, that it's a lot of fun, uh, and that other folks uh, should consider checking it out. If you're watching on Facebook, very similar, you can click like on the video and then you can tag a friend or family member in the comment section or just click the share button. That's really the only three things we ask. And uh, other than that, we'll get right into greeting everyone. We didn't see y'all live last week, so it'll be exciting to see y'all here today. And we've got Ray is watching. Stacy in Lafayette, Colorado, beautiful 72 degrees. Can you believe it is December? No, I cannot. Excited to celebrate our Lord and Savior's birth this month. That makes three of us there, Stacy. Thank you so much. Eileen is watching from Nebraska. Hello, everyone. Sunny and nice in Nebraska today. Jan is watching. Hi and late. Happy Thanksgiving from Chino Valley. Jan, what is your favorite Thanksgiving food? Let's have you answer that for me. It's a happy late Thanksgiving. Sherman Johnson is watching from Norman, Oklahoma, 72 degrees and nice. Lori is watching from sunny Florida. Susan Farrell is watching from Southwest Michigan, 41 degrees, cloudy with a few showers. I would love a few showers here, but uh, we'll take them when we can get them. Jan says the weather in Chino Valley is perfect. Cowboy Ken is watching from Connecticut in 40 degree weather. And Lisa is watching from uh, Conneaut Lake, Pennsylvania, kind of chilly. My mom passed away yesterday, so I won't be partaking in the chat, but I wanted to say hi. She was 95 and didn't suffer. Lisa, thank you so much for sharing that with us. Really, really appreciate you being willing to share that with us. Um, our prayers go out to you, and um, and we know that even, even though she was older and didn't suffer, that um, we were made to be in community and fellowship. And so I know that that's a loss. Um, really do appreciate you being willing to share with us. Thank you for allowing us to remember her with you. Um, Susan uh, has our first question of the day. Steve, can you please talk about proper hoof trimming again, shoeing and hoof angles for mules? I see many mules with low or cut off heels improperly trimmed by farriers. What is the best way to start correcting an improper trim? Steve, what would you say to Susan? Well, here, we always, when you trim, folks, you trim to the angle of the shoulder. That's really important. Angle of the shoulder. You look at that angle, it's going to be the front foot and the rear foot's the same. Unfortunately, the back foot on your mules uh, comes from daddy the donkey, just like front feet, but the back foot, it really goes down low on the heels. And a lot of, unfortunately, mm, yep, the shoers, farriers, whatever you want to call them, they end up trimming it too short. So what do you got to do? You got to start shoeing them. And uh, as you shoe, they will start growing hoof. Now, some of them are faster than others. And then some folks want to sell you this hoof grower and all this stuff, don't listen to that. Just start shoeing. Have your shoer only put four nails on. That's that's what you need. Four nails in the front. And these four nails is all you need. That way, you've got expansion on the back of the hoof. And that's really, really important because you want that foot to come down. When it comes down, it expands and it comes back up. It contracts. It expands and contracts. And that's what you want the back of that hoof to be doing, expanding and contracting. When you put a third nail line in, it's right at the quarter area, right where it's the weakest part of your hoof. And you'll see parts of the hoof sometimes go up like this, right at the quarter area, see a quarter cracks and stuff. But uh, you, you, everybody's going to go, four nails? That's it? Yep. That is all you need. Uh, I've done it now for close to 25 years. And uh, if you know how to shoe, uh, even if you don't know how to shoe, it's it's perfect. You put in the four nails and go from there. Uh, so, and it does take a while. You're, you're looking over a year of growth. 
So folks, um, one of the things, the first video that I ever recorded from Steve was well over uh, 10 years ago. I mean, gosh, it's close to 15 years now, but the content is still spot on. We recorded at Queen Valley Mule Ranch a clinic all about shoeing. That was the first thing I ever recorded. It was freezing that morning. Uh, there had been some rain and it was cold and so it was foggy, which we don't get in Arizona very much. Um, it was foggy. It was frigid, um, but it was a great, great clinic. And so one of the things that Steve advocates is folks learning how to do their own shoeing, learning how to do their own trimming, and learning how to become their best advocate for understanding the way to take care of the animal's hoof and the feet. Because if you don't have a foot, you don't got an animal. So I'm going to put a link in the comments section where you can check out the video that Steve put together all about teaching you to trim and uh, care for your animal's feet. And there's a video on donkeys, there's a video on mules, uh, and there's a video on horses in that um, in that uh, instructional video. So great question, uh, Linda follows it up, and maybe you said this, Steve. I was reading um, I was reading some of the other questions that have come in. She says, "What is the angle of the shoulder? What angle? Did you explain what that was, or can you explain that for Linda?" Well, I you know it just every mule is going to be different, but you look at the shoulder, and you know it could be 45, it could be 54. I don't know. But when you look at that angle, just stand back and look. And you will look at the hoof, look at the shoulder, and you should see them both being the same. Get back far enough that you can see it. Uh, but every angle, every shoulder is going to be different on your mules. So therefore, you want to shoot to that angle. Very good. Okay. Uh, Linda, if you got more questions, and you know what, I'll see if I can bring up a photo and let Steve kind of explain it uh, later on. I'm looking right now. I don't have a good one, but we'll see if I can find one. Uh, Steve, this one came in from Caitlin. Now, Caitlin's asking about private instruction, and I can answer that, Caitlin. The, the reality is that life has just drastically changed for Steve and the Edwards family. Um, about five or six years ago, uh, just the decision was made that, hey, we can help more people focusing on YouTube and Facebook and social media and doing things by text than we can waiting and having folks come out to the ranch. On top of that, the ranch looks a lot different today than it did 10 years ago. And Steve, with family all over the United States and so many friends and mule communities, he's traveling a lot more often. So we don't do private instruction um, pretty much at all anymore. The only opportunities we have for private instruction is when Steve is invited to an expo and there are participants that will sign up to, to be with Steve at that expo. And then when we do an event at Queen Valley Mule Ranch, an official event, and you can sign up to be a participant there. So those are the two best and only opportunities for any type of private instruction. However, the reason why we do this program every week is because we believe that you are the best person suited to train your animal, to understand them, to spend time with them, and to see results. So that's the first part of Caitlin's question, but here's what she's working with, Steve, and maybe you can give her some pointers. I'm not sure if this is something you do or something you think is even possible. My husband and I have a couple of wild burros that we adopted. We originally got the burros as livestock guardian animals. However, my husband is a big hunter, Steve is out hunting, uh, and we were discussing the possibility of having one or two of them trained to become pack animals for his hunting trips. Again, we know very little about this type of thing, and it may be way too difficult to, with completely wild burrows. However, I figured I would look into this and see what options were available. Do you offer personal training for something like this? Likely there are multiple levels here. First, the burrow needs to be trained, then my husband to handle the burrow. Would love to hear from you and your options or suggestions you might have. This is from Caitlin. What would you say to Caitlin, Steve? Well, you know, it's a good idea to use these donkeys for packing out your game or packing in your camp, things like that. It's It works great. A uh, very good friend of mine, Eric, from uh, Mountain Ridge Gear, he uses donkeys exclusively for his packing and stuff. Uh, start out with the ground communication kit, folks. You, you just can't go wrong. You can't do enough ground communication. So 
take your ground communication kit, watch the video, and folks, do not rely upon the halter. The halter is not the important part. The important part is the come along hitch. And so there's where I would start, folks, doing the come along work and go from there. Because if you had to pay a trainer to do this, you're looking at $1,500 a month per donkey. So it's good. you can get into a really expensive donkey in a short time if you're not careful. So one of the things that we've noticed over the years, um, the greatest evidence that you are the best person to learn and teach your animal is the fact that we're talking the ones, just the ones that we know of hundreds of people, probably this year, thousands of people over the course of the last five to 10 years have, have given a report in some way, shape or form of experiencing success using the come along rope, the problem mule video, and the rope halter. The combination of those three items, done the way Steve says, they experience success. And so the reason why we know you can do it, Caitlin, Caitlin, is because hundreds if not thousands of people over the last decade, 20 years, 30 years, have done it as well. And we believe that you can accomplish it too. We believe in you. And if there's anything we can do, we want to help you. So just let us know. Uh, so we've got Linda, the mule servant, and Theo, the sweet one-eyed mule in cold and rainy rural central Ohio, just back from lovely Southern California. Hey, that's closer to us than, uh, than usual. Hope you enjoyed your trip. Michelle is watching from East Liverpool, Ohio. 48 degrees and raining. Lisa says, thank you for your thoughts and prayers. She had a wonderful life and was more than okay with dying. Thank you. We appreciate you letting us, uh, letting us celebrate her life with you. Uh, let's see. Michelle, uh, let's see. Linda, Karen is watching from Raymond, California. Um, we've got Andrea watching from Boone, North Carolina. Cloudy, 40s. Very sorry for your loss, Lisa. Praying. Yeah, I love this mule community, Steve. Isn't it so cool seeing the folks show up each and every week just sharing life together? Isn't that neat? No um, okay, Susan says, do you have a certain type of shoe you prefer or just a regular keg shoe? Do you use Borium for riding on the rocky trails? Thank you, Steve. I uh, Yeah, I just use a keg shoe. I use St. Croix's. They've got a mule shoe out there, folks, but, oh, it'll save you a little bit of hammer work. But otherwise, but, oh, excuse me. You've been out there hunting it. You've probably been up since early today. Yeah, boy, up, well, I usually am up early anyway, but this is going up one, one mountain and down the other, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, so, yeah, I use St. Croix shoes. They're pretty easy to, to hammer. Uh, they do have St. Croix mule shoes but you're still going to have to shape. Uh, but yeah, just a regular keg shoe would be good. As long as you got a good anvil and know how to use the hammer, you got her made. Very good. I put a link in the comment section to the shoeing videos if you want to take a look at that, Susan. Um, like I said, it's a great video there and it really, it, if I do say so myself, the camera work was spectacular. You'll really wow. enjoy it. And if you have any problems with the camera work, I have no idea who filmed it. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> Steve, did you get an elk yet? What are you hunting for? Ta yeah, tell us a little bit about what you got going on right now. Actually, I'm down in uh, Vail, Arizona uh, at the ranch that Randy manages. Um, and uh, it's the Andrada Ranch. And I'm hunting cows, whitetail. Is what we're hunting, and I've uh, I've been hunting now for six days, and I've seen one deer. And this country is pretty uh, pretty tough, folks. Miles and miles of miles and miles and miles. Uh, as you can see around there, it, I'm kind of on top of a mountain right now, but it's a uh, it's tough country, and uh, it's it's also tough because. I'm having to walk and not ride a mule. <laughs> yeah, it makes it a little bit tough, but we can do that, you know. So Steve messaged me early this morning. Hey, Dave, I'm going to go driving around, see where I can get cell phone service. So he found a spot where there were five bars and uh, yeah, coming in crystal clear. It looks real good there. Yeah, yeah. Here we are. Here this we are. Is what we do, but I can, 
I, I got to see my buddy Randy now for the first time since uh, since the can cancer monster has been chasing him. And uh, he's doing good. He's up and moving around. He's got his jeans on, his hat, and his long sleeve shirt, you know. And so we still got to be praying for him, folks. You know, yeah. we still got to ask God's abundance upon him. And uh, But he's doing good. He's uh, just doing chemo right now, and he's doing really good. Yeah, appreciate uh, appreciate the update. And yeah, folks, if you are the praying kind, uh, you know, please remember Lisa and also uh, remember Randy. Uh, Randy's a, a good man and he's in good spirit. He's just always in good spirits. And uh, and so, you know, we'd like to come alongside him any way that we can. And that's what makes YouTube and Facebook really cool is that we're able to get real close, even though we're real far away. The next question here, this one comes in from Kareen. I've got a big problem with my mule. And first and foremost, Kareen, I just want to tell you, lots of people have big problems with their animals, so you're not alone. At the beginning, she was difficult, but with the halter I bought from you, she was much more respectful. She doesn't like the bit at all, so I was thinking of a problem in the mouth. The vet looked, but had to sedate her to heal her teeth. I also took the opportunity to vaccinate her, and since they can't approach her anymore, she didn't even become mean to want to type and no longer possible put the halter on. I'm really sad. What can I redo to regain confidence in advance? Thank you for your help. Well, one of the downsides here when you get the vet check and things like this, you know, no, nobody wants to be poked and prodded, and neither does these mules. So, the confidence builder is going to be uh, a long-term thing, unfortunately. Uh, the uh, rope halter, folks, I keep telling you, it's not the important part. It is the come-along hitch. Come-along hitch. So uh, there's nothing easy about this. Um, and, and do you have a round pin uh, or do you have a square pin? What do you have available there? So here's what's going to have to happen. Um, the mule is going to walk away from you as you're walking toward it. And if it does, you take your come along rope, hold on one end and throw the whole rope at him and reach out and touch him. It's like your hand extending. And that tells him, hey, if you leave me, you're going to be made uncomfortable. You need to be the most comfortable place in that round pin or in that square uh, corral <coughs> and there's nothing easy uh, about this now was this mule pretty easy to deal with before the vet come out and you put the halter on so that's a great <laughs> great question kareen steve anything else so obviously she messaged that in um anything else you would say uh that you can say without knowing that information yeah, I really need you really need to, to, to kind of know if it was already kind of an office mule, then then the halter would have been the wrong thing to use, folks. Don't use the halter. OK, I mean, it's it's a great tool to be able to tie one up, things like this. But when you got when you're doing vet work, you're doing any type of of shoeing or things like this where it's a little bit of a problem. Use the come along rope. Get halter out of your mind, folks. Um, I'm almost sorry in some ways, Dave, that I even introduced the halter. It's a good tool. needs to be used, but it needs to be used minimally. And use the come-along hitch, folks. It's, 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 it, it, it will save you tons of situations like in this right here. Um, I can't tell you how many animals that I have used between the come-along hitch and the uh, and the uh, twitch, those two are imperative. If I'm going to be giving a mule a shot, I'm going to put the come along hitch on that tells his feet to stand still. Then I'm going to put the twitch on and create the natural endorphins. And by doing those two things right there, I can give my shots without the animal having to blow up because that that twitch on the nose is creating the natural endorphins. You'll you can see I've got a video that goes with the twitch and you'll see a mule there that nice mule doesn't want his eye to be doctored on. But then we, we, you can see it throw his head. You get a 300 pound head hits you. It don't feel good. And so 
And then you see me put the twitch on. I start rubbing on the mule. I start opening and closing the twitch. And pretty soon that mule starts getting relaxed. And pretty soon I go ahead and I can do my doctoring. I've castrated. I have uh, uh, um, giving all kinds of shots. I have even stitched up animals using that natural way of doing it. And between the come along rope and that twitch, it's a wonderful tool. So, Steve, um, thinking a little bit about the come along rope and the rope halter, let me let me ask something, and you tell me if I'm understanding correctly, because I I, I want to know, I want to get clarity on this. If I'm hearing you right, I want to use the come along rope for virtually all of my ground foundation training. Now there's times where you'll work in a rope halter here or there, but basically the foundation training happens with the come along rope. My correction happens with the come along rope. My timing practice happens with the come along rope. Then once I get done with that, the rope halter is there as an alternative for maybe leading them and not putting on a bridle with a bit or maybe tying them up or moving them from here to there and letting the knots just kind of communicate a little bit with you. But you're saying like that, that is, that is meant to use as just kind of like a, an everyday pair of shoes, not your training shoes, not, and I, and I'm saying shoes like sneakers, not animal shoes, like not your train, like not training shoes, not fancy shoes, but just kind of like your everyday sneaker that it's like, I'm not doing anything special. Use the rope halter. I'm training, put on this training shoes. I'm riding, you know, use the bridle. What, like, is, am I understanding this correct? That, that's basically right. Let me just give you a, for instance, I've got an adjusted rope halter on and I've tied my mule to the hitching post and the mule is moving around. Okay. With that halter on and it's adjusted, when the mule moves to the right, the knot bumps him. Moves to the left, the knot bumps him. Pulls back, the rope catches him behind the pole. So anytime the mule moves around, which they do because they don't want to be tied, they don't want to be standing in one place, uh, anytime that they move around, they're going to bump that halter. Somewhere, they're going to bump it. They're going to bump it, and it's going to make them uncomfortable. There is the place that I would use the rope halter, okay? But remember this. You taught the mule to stand still and quiet with the come along hitch first first then you tie the mule to the hitch and rail and let them move around take it to the next level now the other place i would use the come the uh the the uh rope halter is i would hook a sur single up and i would hook the rope halter up and i would let them go around in a circle with the rope halter because it there makes it a training device without you on them. It's a wonderful tool using the sur single and using the rope halter because anytime you want to train a mule to back up, to, to turn right, turn left, you do it with the come along rope. And then as you progress, then they understand because you always use their nose. Their, new, their nose builds a foundation. Is it imperative to ride with a bit? Absolutely. But first, all your backup, all your turns, everything is done with the come along rope. Okay. And then can, can you go ahead and use a combination of both of them? Yes. Combination of the rope halter underneath, the come along rope on top, and use a combination of two of them. And then wean off of the, the come along rope and just use the halter. But remember this, my preference would be that halter pretty much just don't get used hard at all. When I go in to get my mule in, in the corral, I put the, just the loop on them. I don't even have to put the come along hitch on. They're so well trained and, and believe in that, in that rope halter, I mean, in that come along rope, they just follow me. They know that they're supposed to be straight. When I get over to where I'm gonna saddle them, I haven't got, I haven't put the come on hitch on folks, just the loop. Well, this is the goal that you're gonna eventually get to, okay? Is that you throw the rope on the ground, 
you pick up all four feet, you clean them, you take and brush them, you put your saddle on, you put your bridle on, you pull your loop off, you ride off. Okay, that's that's what I do. That's what I do. Can you use the rope halter to do that? Yeah, you can do that if you want, but you don't need to tie them, folks. You don't. They should have so much respect for that lead rope because of their nose. You train a mule from their nose. Stop, go, right turn, left turn. I said it again, and I'll say it again, and I'll say it a, a jillion times more. That nose is where you do your training. Feet stand still, feet move. Feet go to the right, feet go to the left. Come along, rope. Very good. That's helpful. Uh, so, Steve, I got a picture here of a mule. I'm going to go ahead and show it. Uh, so, right here... Uh, you've got the picture of the mule, and is this the slope of the shoulder right here? I know you're on your uh, computer. I don't know if it's easy to see. Is this the slope of oh, the shoulder good. that you're talking about? Yes. Yes. Notice that the left front foot, the one I can see the best, is more straight up and down. It's not sloped like the shoulder is. Okay? So it's no, notice the hoof. It's more straight up and down. Notice the the the, the shoulder. It's more <coughs> it's more at an angle. So what needs to be done here is that that foot. You need to put the shoe out about a nickel's width distance. Yes, on the toe. And what that does is it's going to lengthen the toe so that the the foot looks more like the shoulder. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Very good. Hopefully that's yeah, helpful there, the Linda. Yeah. Same thing with the back foot. Oh, let me, put, let me put it back up there. There you go. Okay. You see how the black back foot, you know, it, it, you follow, follow the pasturing down and notice how you follow it down. And all of a sudden the front of the, of the foot blunts off. Same thing with your front foot, follow the pasturing down. And all of a sudden, the foot blunts off. It should be the same slope as your pasturing, which matches your shoulder. Look at the slope of the pasturing and look at your foot. Your foot drops off, okay? Uh, also, that mule's got a downhill hip. Uh, that mule would need a downhill hip pad in order to be able to uh, uh, keep the saddle from going forward. But we're talking about hooves, but look at the pasturing. The pastern, as it slopes, you should follow the slope, and the foot should keep right on going. But it don't. It blunts off. And unfortunately, that's what a lot of your shoers do. So you start out with your shoe about, about a nickel's worth of distance in the front. So when you put that shoe on, you should look down, and you should be able to take a nickel and go all the way around there and then start working that toe out. Awesome. Uh, we've got Mark watching from Mountains of Anza, California. Sunny and 70 degrees. Love your show. We love hearing that. Thank you, Mark. Uh, let's see. Uh, Linda, so I think Steve talked about this. So when do you use the halter? Steve just talked about that. Let us know if you've got any follow-ups. You know we'll be good for getting you an answer. David is watching from East Texas, 72 degrees and sunny, loving this beautiful weather. It is a gift. Uh, let's see here. Lisa says, thank you to all. I'm new to the mule community, but feel very welcomed by all of you. I'm listening. All right. We'll keep it going for you there, Linda. Uh, Mark says, I have a Mustang Molly mule. And let me tell you, the come along hitch works wonders. Mustang mules are tough as nails and just, just as tough to work with what's a mustang mule steve well a mustang basically is uh is what everybody's calling wild horses now it's basically some horses that got turned loose by the uh different tribes and and so that they could just graze well then they went over the fence so to speak and become feral and now we're calling them mustangs and the the original mustang looks way way different than what you see now what you're seeing now is basically a, a quarter horse gone feral if you look at the geiger mustang look that up 
It's on an island. It's more the original Mustang of any of them, the Geiger Mustang. See the head, the slope of the nose, the way the shoulders go. That's what a true Mustang looks like. Basically, we've got a feral horse out there, but they are tough. I mean, they they got bred uh, that. That's rare. That's extremely rare to find a Mustang, quote, Mustang mule. That's, I'm talking one in a 5,000. It's really rare. Congratulations. Mark's got him something special there. Uh, Lynn's got yeah. a question. Lynn sent in a message. I just bought my first mule. Uh, no one up here in Canada, hey, we've gone international too, knows a thing about mules. I would love to get the proper bridle and bit and saddle from you. I have looked at your saddles and they are well done. I have a lot of horses on my ranch and run a lot of cattle. I was wondering what type of stock saddle you would recommend for my mules. From your YouTube videos, I will not put, put a horse saddle on him and cause problems. Hope you can help me. Thanks. So uh, what does she mean by stock saddle? She's looking for a recommendation. You've got Steve Edwards saddles. She's asking for stock saddles. What's she looking for here? I think she's asking for what do I have in stock? What do I have at my store ready to go? Got it. And yeah, and and here's the saddle, folks. I mean, that trail light saddle, I beat it to death. I ride it more than anything else. Cordura is extremely strong. I used it in my pack bags, packing freight and stuff. Them mules brush against rocks, cactus, you know, all kinds of stuff all the time. And it takes a beating. And the Cordura uh, doesn't mildew, which is important in, in parts of the country that's wet, especially when she's in, I think she said she was in BC. Um, but anyway, it's you don't have to oil it. You don't have to maintain it. It runs free in your leg. Uh, it's really good for folks that have lower back and knee problems and leg problems and hip problems. It's really good for that uh, because there's no pressure from the stirrups. And, and it's like zap, you put it on there. You can go to my website. You can see a picture of my saddle in the trail light saddles. You'll see it there. Uh, and I've beat it to death. Yeah. Uh, no joke. That's the saddle that Steve rides, the trail, trail light saddle. Um, every time I've seen him ride, that's the one that he rides. He's been riding it for years. He is not joking. He has beat it to death. It looks it, uh, but it is uh, it is in every good, great working shape that you would want it to be. Um, we're real big advocates uh, for the Cordura. We're real big advocates for the Beta. The reason we love the Beta is because the Beta on the Britchen and the Breast Collar and uh, Reins and whatever it is, the beta is uh, low to no maintenance. You just spray it down with some Windex or something like that and wash it off and, and that's it. Uh, you don't have to oil it like leather. Uh, um, what is it? 600 PSI compared to what? Yeah, 650 PSI to leather at 250 PSI. Yeah, so it's stronger. It doesn't crack like leather does. Uh, it's what Steve uses himself. So we are big advocates for the for the alternative materials when it makes sense. And with the Cordura and with the Beta, it makes sense. Um, hey, let's Dave. hop back over here on to, were you gonna hey, say Dave. something? Yeah, we just got a low battery deal here for my Mac. Oh. And I've got a low battery in my <laughs> in my rig. So who knows, if I go dark, you know, I'd run out of speed. You're still, if you go dark, you're still with us. It's just the Mac that's not with us. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's see what we can get through here. Michelle says, what is the average cost of feeding a trail riding mule per month? Oh, probably around, uh, with hay prices the way they are right now, at 20 bucks a bale, you're going to go through four bales um, a month. Uh, so you, you're looking, you know, an average of 100 bucks a month. All right. Uh, Linda says, prayers on the way for Randy. Thank you, Linda. Um, let's see. Is the Twitch video on YouTube? Mark, excuse me, Mark. No, it's not. Um, Steve and I set up some special time to get very specific, set aside some um, time to get very specific and demonstrate the way to use it. And we sell the Twitch with the video. Now, if you know how to use the Twitch, you can get it without the video, I think. Maybe, I don't know if, maybe we change that. The video yeah. is, wait, we changed it? Yeah. Yeah, you have to get the video with the Twitch. So just go to the website, look for the Twitch, 
um, you'll want that video. Uh, it's almost irresponsible not to have the video and use the Twitch. You need to know how to use it. But when you see it being used, amazing. Um, Judy is watching from Texas. Richard Matthews. Good afternoon, Chaplain Steve and Chaplain Dave. I told Richard Matthews that I was ordained, and so I get the chaplain uh, get the chaplain treatment. I'll tell you what, Steve feels pretty good. Yeah. Uh, Astra's watching 70 degrees in Northeast Oklahoma. Rob is watching. Um, Steve, I see your Ranger. Is it working for you? It's sunny and 87 degrees in Queen Valley. Rob is asking this. Well, it's, yeah, it's, it's kind of working, but I think I may have some things figured out. It went through, uh, 10 gallons of gas yesterday in about six hours. Ooh. So we got it. Yeah, it's pretty tough. So I think we got some things figured out. It runs good. But uh, I think I'm going to have to replace that uh, air sensor, and, and then I think we're there. Uh, Jan is watching, says, I love, all caps, my trail light saddle. And Bunny, my saddle donk, does too. Judy is watching, that trail light is the one that I want. Judy, it wants you too. It wants you badly. Uh, Linda says, beta is easy on the old person hands. Uh, to buckle. There you go. Hey, every little thing you can, everything little thing you can do matters. Uh, let's see here. Susan says, how would you train a mule to stand calmly at the hitching rail when it moves back and forth literally for hours? It has been tied with friends, tacked, and unt untracked. So we start with the come along hitch. We teach the feet to stand still first with the come along hitch. Then we adjust the rope halter. So look, they think because they are an equine they think that as they move that they'll finally get going and go where they want to do but see when they get uncomfortable i.e with the with the come along hitch or with a just halter every time they move they bump their nose and it makes them uncomfortable you're going to have to you're going to have to toughen up and just let that mule stay right there with the rope halter until they stand quiet also put a rubber mat underneath them. But folks, don't just put any rope halter on there. Adjust the rope halter so that it makes them uncomfortable. That's the perfect place for the rope halter, right there where you don't have to be involved. All right, let's see here. Uh, one of our friends from Israel is tuning in. So we've gone international. Now, I don't speak no. Hebrew. I don't read Hebrew, so I'm not sure of the name. But if you type your name in English, I will say it because we are so glad that you're here today. Uh, Judy says, I first need to get the starter kit and the martingale. Yes, you do, Judy. It is, uh, it is a game changer. Mark says, Steve, we talked before uh, CBD. Tried it, and it doesn't seem to do much. I do not recommend CBD at this time. I will continue to test and let you and Dave know results, if any. Appreciate that. Yeah, so what Mark is talking about a while ago, um, Mark brought up the idea of using CBD with the mules um, as a way of uh, relaxing them for medication and things like this, right? For, for doctoring them. And uh, that's something that Steve was unfamiliar with. We hadn't really heard much about it. We, we know what it is and what it does and some of the benefits, but as far as applying it with equine and the mule specifically, didn't know. So that's what Mark's talking about right there. Nadi. Nadi is watching from Israel. Thank you so much, Nadi. Appreciate you being here. Uh, Steve, that's all the questions that I've got. We're about 15 minutes done early. Your battery's about to die. I say we go ahead and wrap it up today. Oh, Joyce is watching from Southwest Alberta, Canada. We've gone international again. Wanted to get that in there, Joyce. Uh, anything you want to say here before we're all done? We'll let you go before the laptop dies, but uh, what you want to say? Well, no, it's good to hear Nadi. I got some good friends uh, in Israel. Uh, <clears throat> matter of fact, I got good friends all over the world. Dave is kind of fun. And folks, only reason I got those good friends is because Dave here, he knows how to push the buttons to make things go. So if you need a website or something like that, uh, you want to Im improve your your uh, community or whatever, you see this guy. Uh, he'll 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 do good. Even even though he's uh, his hair sticks up in the air because he he puts his he puts his hands in his socket too often. Anyway, uh, no, it's 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 uh it's because of what Dave is being able to do with YouTube. This gets that information out there, folks. We want to help you. 
yes, it's nice to be able to make a buck so Dave can be paid and his three boys can go come see the car shows with me, stuff like that. <laughs> That's what's important, you know. For me, I'm retired. I'm collecting Social Security. So keep working so I can get my Social Security check. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we yeah. go. All right, folks. Thank you so much for hanging right. out with us. It is a community, and we do appreciate you being part of it. We could be doing lots of things with our time. The fact that you're here with us means the world to us. Uh, can't wait to see you next week. Uh, Steve, stay safe. Keep charged. Get some rest. And we'll talk to you when we talk to you. All right? Yeah, I'm having fun out here with my nephew and his son, so we're we're enjoying. Enjoy it. All right, we'll see y'all. Bye-bye.